Now SpaceX currently has the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch vehicles, and both of these vehicles are capable of recovering and reusing their core stages, being the first stage. However, SpaceX wants to continue to lower the cost to get into orbit, and thus their current path is to build a much bigger, stronger, and more reusable vehicle. And that is what they are working on in Boca Chica, Texas. So in this video, we're going to be discussing what they've been able to develop so far, and what what the near future looks like at their facility in Texas. So let's talk about that. So over the past few years, SpaceX or Elon Musk had been alluding to a much larger rocket bigger than the Falcon Heavy that they had been designing. And it wasn't really until September of 2018, when the Dear Moon project was announced, that they would actually be starting the development or design of some of these prototypes. Now the initial idea, which was again a few years ago, was called the Interplanetary Transport System. Then it was later to be changed to the Big Falcon Rocket or BFR, and now has been broken up into two sections called the Super Heavy, which is the main booster or the first stage, and then Starship, which would hold either astronauts, cargo, or satellites to go either to space or even to other planets or the moon. Now according to the current design, it's going to stand at about 118 meters tall and be 9 meters in diameter. So this is an incredibly large vehicle and more than likely the diameter isn't going to change because that's more of the design feature, but it's likely that the height could change just because of how large they want to make this. But again, it's subject to change because they are in the development phase and working on prototypes for this vehicle. Now much like how the Falcon Heavy or Falcon 9 boosters land vertically as of right now, SpaceX lands that both the Super Heavy booster and Starship will land vertically. So it's going to be really interesting, as I mentioned, to see how this progresses. Now I don't want to discuss too much of the entire vehicle as a whole, again because they are still in the development phase, but I want to focus primarily on this video about what they've been able to do in Boca Chica, Texas, and how it's been changing over time and what we might be able to expect in the near future. So as I briefly mentioned previously, in September of last year, the Dear Moon project kicked off. And if you aren't familiar with it, you can watch this video to learn more, but a brief summary is that they want to send a starship around the moon in cislunar space, not onto the moon, but just to go around and come back. And the main goal for this was to happen in the year 2023. So that would give about five, a little less than five years in order for them to develop both the super heavy booster and Starship and have it be able to successfully land. So that's a lot for them to be able to do. But again, SpaceX and Elon Musk have pretty tight timelines. So I expect that could potentially be pushed back. But nonetheless, once that announcement came out, there was a lot of work that basically began just a couple months later. In December of 2018, or nearing the end of 2018, is when they started seeing actual development occurring in Boca Chica. Now Boca Chica is a very southeastern part of Texas that in fact is going to be where most of the Super Heavy and Starship development is going to take place. So the development began for one of the early prototypes of Starship. Now this is actually going to be called Starship Hopper or Star Hopper, and this relates back Back to the Falcon 9 testing when they are trying to figure out how well they could land their boosters. They had a project called Grasshopper, and this is where they had a rather small booster which they would incrementally basically hop off the launch pad. Being at first, they would go maybe a couple meters, and upwards to 10 meters, and then get up to a couple hundred meters. And these incremental hops help them develop the control algorithm to eventually land a full-blown rocket booster. So they imagine the same thing's going to be happening here at Boca Chica. So instead of designing a full-size starship, they're designing one that's a little bit smaller in height, has the same diameter, but a little bit smaller in height, which will allow them to go through with some of these tests. Now, if you want to learn more about the test flights for Grasshopper, I'd recommend checking out this video. But nonetheless, let's continue discussing Starship Hopper. What were they able to do? And it turns out by about mid to late January, they finished the exterior development of Starship Hopper. And originally, it was 39 meters tall and 9 meters in diameter. 
Now I say originally because during a really windy day, the nose cone or basically the top half of Starship Hopper fell off and was basically destroyed or wasn't able to be used anymore. But SpaceX said we really don't need it because this original prototype isn't going to be going to very high altitudes or they won't really need the aerodynamic effects. Therefore, it's just mainly to test how well the engines are going to work on such a structure. So from late January to early March, they were working on the interior of the rocket Rocket. mainly the plumbing between the different fuel tanks and the Raptor engine, the fuel tanks being liquid oxygen and methane. So overall, they spent up until about mid-March putting together the Starship Hopper, and then that's when they sent it over to the launch pad, and the first two test flights actually took place in early April. Now you might be expecting, oh, how high did this jump, 10 meters, 100 meters? But rather, the very first test was just a few centimeters to make sure it could go off the ground, and the fins were actually tethered to the ground so that it wouldn't go too high. So during the second test, it maybe only went a meter or two in altitude, maybe not even that high. But this is mostly just to test how well the structure of the system worked. Now SpaceX announced that both of those hops were a success, which is really great for Starship Hopper and the prototype as a whole. And potentially there could be a couple very small hops with this prototype, however if they want to reach any higher of an altitude they're going to have to implement aerodynamic control. And in fact they don't necessarily need to add a nose cone to this prototype anymore because they've also been developing a different Starship Hopper. In fact this is their Starship Orbital prototype. Now whether or not it will actually reorbit. I'm not so sure, but rather it's probably going to be going at much higher altitude tests than this one's capable of, just because it will have the aerodynamic control and be a much better representation of trying to land a real starship. So this is probably the next step for their hopper stages. Now interestingly enough, back in January, Elon Musk said that the first tests of starship orbital prototype could actually take place in June of this year, and there's been some images taking of the development happening at Boca Chica, but it's not so sure whether or not they'll meet that deadline. But it's more than likely that this could happen by the end of 2019, or we could see higher altitude hops, so maybe hundreds of meters or potentially even a thousand meters. So then this leads us to the question of what do we expect to see from Boca Chica in the future? If you think about it, they are still in the research and development phase, so a lot of the design of this vehicle is subject to change over time. So I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the things I mentioned in this video end up being out of date in a couple months or so. However, it will be interesting to see because they are designing this vehicle out in the open. So a lot of SpaceX fans are actively watching and seeing what new changes are actually occurring. But interestingly enough, SpaceX wants both Super Heavy, the booster, and Starship to have their first launch by the end of next year. So if they really want to be able to meet that ambitious goal, then we should be seeing higher altitude hops in the next couple months. But it'll be interesting to follow up and see how the design and development of this vehicle changes over the course of a year. But with all that being said, I want to pose the question to you. When do you think the first high altitude tests of Starship will take place? Will it be during the summer of 2019? Or do you think they'll be able to push it back until later in 2019 or early 2020? Let me know in the comments below. But thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.